Hey again, welcome to the C4D Fundamental Series. And today we'll start into the world of modeling by having a look into spline modeling. But before that, let's compare the different modeling techniques we can use uh, in Cinema 4D. We already talked about in the first session about the parametric modeling options we have by using uh, basically all the, the parametric objects in Cinema 4D. Well, as you can think, um, but just using those base objects, we really can't build um, any complex objects. It's like if you would try to build something really complex and detailed with just some toy blocks or Lego bricks. So we have to, to use some other techniques and tools to, um, for example, create non-uniform or organic shaped object or, well, anything that is um, more complex than just the, the basic objects we have. And, well, as I said today, we'll have a look into the spline modeling, which is one option to um, to model something. And later on uh, in the next session, we'll also have a look into the polygon modeling. And as you can see in this chart, um, there's something like a, um, a rise of complexity or difficulty in the different techniques. So when you think of parametric modeling, this is pretty simple. You can just um, add block after block or object after object. When we come to spline modeling, um, we can create more advanced objects, but still um, it's not that difficult. But then when we go to polygon modeling where we can create everything we want, every, everything we can think of, it gets a little bit more, more complex or more difficult and you need a little bit more of experience to achieve your goals. Okay, so, um, well, spline modeling. So for example, what if the, we want to build something like this. So this like a little bit organic shamed, maybe non-uniform um, uniform objects. We can use a spline for that or a spline, um, spline modeling for that. But what actually is a spline? Um, we have to go back a little bit in time um, to, to the era where we had no computer aided design software or no computers at all. So um, the architects or the draftsman back in the time had to use, um, well, something called a spline to draw their mathematical accurate, um, like, curves. So they, they used something like a, a bendable uh, ruler to, to draw their curves on, on paper or their, their, their architectural sheets or whatever. Um, well, so this is um, where the, the spline comes from. And nowadays, we, you all know spline by, by something called the Bezier curve, probably. So um, when you use a, a software like Photoshop or Illustrator, you have those Bezier curves, you have multiple control points at the end of the curve and something in between. Um, and this, this point in the middle, this is called basically the, the control tangent. And you use this tangent to define the shape of the curve. So pretty common, I think, for everyone who uses Illustrator or, or Photoshop, we refer to that in uh, in Photoshop or Illustrator as a path. Okay, fine, but um, what can we do with that in a 3D software? So, well, think of um, think of that 2D path, and um, if you would um, project it in a 300 um, 60 degree manner around the symmetry axis, you could create a three dimensional object, which uh, would look like something like this, this bowl. And we refer to that in the 3D world as a NURBS object. So we have a two dimensional spline or path, and we use a generator, in this case called the NURBS generator, to create a three dimensional object. So there, there's a new word again, this NURBS, it's kind of funny, um, sounds kind of funny, and it means non-uniform rational B-spline. So B-spline, again a new word. Well, we don't have to actually understand what non-uniform rational B-spline means. However, I think it's pretty important to understand the meaning of the B-spline. So when you have a look again at the Bezier curve you see right here and the control tangent, and you would now try to create a, a perfect looking circle. And I mean by perfect, I mean really perfect. So also mathematically perfect circle. You would end up by something like this. 
And I exaggerated here a little bit, of course. So if you would zoom into the control tangents really closely, you would see that at those points, the circle is not really a circle, but more something which looks like this. Um, so although Bézier uh, had spent pretty much time, I think, uh, creating or inventing the Bézier curve, uh, still it's not perfect in, in, in really means of perfection if you want to do something like a circle. So there were a few other guys um, sitting together and try to think of something which um, enables us or them to create perfect circles. And as you think, they came up with the B-spline. And the B-spline works pretty much exactly like a busy curve, but we don't have those control tangents anymore. We have multiple control points to define or adjust the, the curve of our spline. And if we go one step further now, we come to our NURBS. Um, so if we project those spline into uh, in the three-dimensional space, we get something uh, something like this. And if we add the control points to it and we add something which is called weighting to the control points, then we get the non-uniform rational B-spline. So as I said, it's not too important to understand what the non-uniform rational stands for, but it's important to understand what the B-spline is. And now, actually, if we work with the with the the splines and the NURBS generators in Cinema 4D, we also don't have to think about the B splines too much in most cases, um, but still it's pretty important to understand it right now. So when we later on go to the polygon modeling, um, it is much easier to understand how the polygon modeling works, uh, especially if we come to the subdivision um, surface modeling, then there is no way around the B splines. Okay, so uh, now let's have a look in Cinema 4D and how splines actually work. So um, one thing which is important act actually when you work with splines is that you should um, change your view from the perspective view to, uh, for example, the front or the right or the top view or whatever. Um, I usually go with the front view. view. Um, when working with splines, it's much easier to work in a two-dimensional space rather than in a 3D space. So when you have a look at the, uh, our um, bar right here, and this is the, the spline area, so like in the with the parametric objects, um, like here, we have also predefined parametric splines we can use. But first, let's have a look at, you, at this um, at the different drawing techniques we can use uh, to draw a spline. So there's the freehand spline. Um, I can just click and drag onto my viewport and draw the spline. And here we go. This is um, my first spline. However, I don't use this uh, too often. You can use it to quickly uh, draw something, but um, if you want to get detailed, it's not the way to go. Um, so if you're more uh, familiar with, with Photoshop or Illustrator, you're also pretty familiar probably with the Bezier curve. and uh, as I told you, you know, just click so to create one control point and if I click and drag my mouse again, I create another control point and also I have this tangent now and the tangent defines um, the shape of our curve. And if I click again, I create another control point and I also create another tangent and I can pretty much define how my spline should look like. Okay, now Let's have a look at the B spline. The B spline is a little bit more more complex to understand and also to uh, to use. Uh, so I click and also create a control point. Now if I click again, uh, I create another com control point. And now if I click for a third time, you see that I created a third control point. But our second control point is not connected to our spline anymore. Um, and as you see, the the more closely I go to this control point, the more linear our curves get. And the more I go away from the control point up here, um, the more the curve I get in our spline. Um, if I create another control point, you see that we have now the, the second control point is up here. 
and um, well this is how I can use the B spline to create my my shape but let me show you more um, a better example of how to how the B spline works actually um, and I start off with the linear um, linear spline right here and I just create something like an uh, rectangular edge and I go to the right click and use the knife tool in line mode to add two more control points or two more cuts into my uh, spline um, now if I go to my spline and have a look at the attributes manager you see right there uh, in the object properties that we can change the type of the spline and I can change, change oh sorry I can change this to B spline right now and now you see what happens our um, hard edge is now transformed or interpolated into this nice curve and now if I go back to my select tool and move those points closer to the control point and I let me zoom in a little bit here you see the closer I move my uh, those two control points to my in-between control point the harder the edge gets and if I do it the other way around I move them further away you see that I get a nice rounded shape now we could do exactly the same uh, shape with also the Bezier curve um, but it would be a little bit more difficult to um, to get like th this um, this shape in, in the first try I think okay um, a few words maybe to to splines in general uh, so most of the time I use the busy spline because I'm used to work with it in Illustrator and I think it's the mo the best best one if you want to draw something um, or the shape of something um, is to use the busy spline now when you um, start drawing in your um, in your viewport and uh, maybe you go back to your live selection tool click anywhere by accident or maybe you uh, create something a different object or a null object or whatever and your um, spline is deselected and you now want to go back to your spline and well uh, continue to draw it then you uh, always find yourself in trouble because every time you um, you go back and like to continue it you will get a new spline in your object manager and uh, actually cannot continue to draw this spline so this is one of the things I don't understand in cinema why they why they um, why I can't not use the um, the Bezier tool anymore to continue drawing. But there's a workaround. So I delete that uh, again and uh, I select my spline again. You actually have to be in point mode and you have to select the um, the move tool. And now with the move tool, I can hold down my command key. And now if I click again, I'm able to continue to draw my spline like before. Now I can also uh, use the command and shift key to um, continue drawing my spline at the start of my spline. And um, actually a good thing is that you can um, see by the gradient of that spline where the start and the end is. So right here is my start point. Uh, the white area and in the blue is the end of my spline and I'll just let me oops, create another point right here maybe and while talking of start and end points you can also use um, a checkbox in cinema when you select the spline here in the object manager and you have a look at the object properties again you can set the uh, checkbox close spline and then cinema will automatically um, close your spline now you can um, use or work with the spline as expected. You can select the point, always make sure you're in point mode and um, move your points around. Um, if you want to move your or change your tangents, you have to, again to be in the, uh, have to select the move tool and then you can click on your tangent points to, to change it. You can also use a variety of um, context menu uh, tools. So whenever, for example, I select those uh, this point right here, I can do right click and, for example, choose soft interpolation, and then Cinema 4D um, interpolates automatically this point for me and creates a new tangent, and then I can go and change the tangent itself. Um, 
yeah, you can also use, for example, if you, oh, let me just delete that for a second. So if you have maybe drawn a linear um, spline and you want to, to round that corner here, you can also use the chamfer uh, function and just click and drag the mouse and you see I uh, cinematic um, divides this one point into two points adds some tangents uh, to create this nice curve uh, so there's a variety of, of other other things you can have a, just play around a little bit with with splines and find out what all those those tools does the most important ones you, you use in everyday work is probably use the hard and soft interpolation um, thing use the equal tangent length and knife tool of course uh, to create new points into your, into your spline also uh, kind of handy once in a while and of course also what's also nice is the chamfer and a neat function is also the create outline thing so if I select everyone and now I use the create outline function you can create a perfect like outline of your spline Okay, so that's it for now for the, the spline tools. And okay, now so let's, let's have a look at the, those four slides generators. We'll now um, have a look into the subdivision the, the surface. Generators. We'll have an extra session for that. Um, and now we'll have a look at those four generators, which uses um, splines to ge generate a 3D shape. Okay, I'm back in Sumra and um, I'm also back in the perspective mode for now. And to illustrate you the the um, the different generators, I will um, firstly uh, use uh, one of the parametric splines. So, for example, I go with the rectangle, and I will start off with the extrude um, generator. So the generators work uh, always like that. You have to put the spline inside of your generator. So now I've added the, uh, the generator, I also added the rectangle and just drag and drop the rectangle into the extrude uh, generator. And now to work with the, with the generator, you have to uh, click on it and then you can go into the attributes manager and see all the different um, options. So the extrude uh, basically extrudes um, your spline in a certain direction. So for example, uh, right now, it, it's extruded by 20 centimeters in the Z direction. And I can, just, of course, increase the value for that. Uh, and by that, I can create a cube. Now, of course, you can um, drop in every kind of uh, spline or shape you have. Um, and with the, like with the parametric objects, um, this is now is a parametric spline. And I can change the state of this and make it editable if I go to this button right here or just hit C on the keyboard. And now you see it's like uh, a normal spline uh, again. And I can use the select tool uh, to select one point, for example, and go ahead and move it around and deform my cube a little bit more. As mentioned before, I also can use the, the context uh, tools, for example, the chamfer to chamfer this corner right here a little bit. So this is pretty much um, how the extrude tool no uh, works. Uh, let me drop in just another shape to, to demonstrate to you, for example, the star. Just drag and drop the star into the extrude. And now you see we can also have a little bit more complex shape generated by the um, extrude generator. Okay, um, next, let's have a look at the lathe um, generator. And for that, I like to go back to my front view again and let's say we want to create something like a, a wine class it's a common example I think for the lathe uh, tool and the lathe tool is always used if you want to um, create like uh, this axis symmetrical objects like uh, wine classes bottles classes in general um, you, you get the idea I think um, okay let me use the Bezier tool again and I want to make sure that my first point is added at the uh, the null point of my scene. So just click anywhere near the area and then I use the coordinates manager to 
um, move it to the uh, null point. And this is important because I don't want to get a hole later on in my um, in my 3D object. Okay, I go ahead and I just create um, the bottom. Make sure that the the Y is also on the in the zero, so that the uh, the 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 point is not moved in on the Y direction in, in any means. And I, I zoom in a little bit, <clears throat> and I go ahead and I do this just pretty roughly right now, so that you get the idea. I want to um, don't hold you up on. Um, on any any details right now um, okay so this is the class and then I click and drag to create the shape maybe it's a little, whoops uh, huge wine class but that's okay for now okay now um you see the the wine class would be a two-dimensional or is like only one dimension right now or two dimensions so pretty thin razor sharp wine class uh, so I want to use the um, create outline tool again to um, create a little thickness for my wine class and I just use it on the outside. Okay. So this is pretty much it. We can use go go in here to add a little detail. First I set this to soft interpolation so that the um, points a little bit more um, look a little bit better for me and now I can oops sorry um, I can move this a little bit around zoom in a little bit go to the move tool and do something like this which is I think common in wine class that the, the, the top is a little bit bigger than the the rest of the class so that it's more, I don't know, soft for your lips if you drink. Okay, so this is the um, the basic spline form of our of our wine class. We can adjust this point maybe a little bit, um, and you see this pretty good goes pretty fast. And I go back to the perspective view right right now, and I add this spline to the lathe generator, and now you see we have a three D generated class. Okay, now if we have a closer look into the inside of our wine class, you see that we have a hole right there, and that's because our um, points right here are not aligned to the um, zero position of the x-axis. So let's fix that, and I just deactivate the lathe NURBS generator for a second. And, um, well, let's have a closer look at this point. Um, first of all, I want it to be on the null position of the x-axis so I just type in null hit the enter key and um, now it's on the null point and I also don't want to um, have the tangent in, uh, right here at this point um, I want it to be more flat so I go ahead and change this at this point to hard interpolation and I just move it up a little bit um, to the top so that it gets into the, the null point here a little bit more smoothly and now of course I have to also do this for the the points up uh, down here but actually we uh, don't necessarily need those points right in the inside of this class right here uh, so I can just go ahead and delete them um, okay so let's activate the lathe NURBS generator again we also already can see right here that it looks quite fine maybe I'll just move it a little bit more uh, up and I go back to the perspective view and now this looks fine. Now we encounter, if you have a close look, another problem, um, especially if you look from the top, you see that the um, the roundness of our uh, class isn't isn't that good. Um, you still see the different segments uh, of the of the rotation. Uh, and to fix this, uh, and this is mostly true for all the other generators, um, if you want to have a more smooth, smoothened shape, uh, just go to the attributes manager and have a look at the at the attributes. Um, so, for example, we have here the the subdivision um, parameter, and if I turn that down, you you see that the uh, the class gets even more uh, hard edges. Uh, 
But if I go into the other direction and move it up maybe to 60, you can see that our, our wine shape is are now pretty smoothed out. Okay, so much about the lathe uh, NURBS generator. Now let's have a look at the sweep generator. The sweep generator is um, most often used, for example, if you want to create a cable or something like this. And um, this time the, the sweep or the, the generator needs two splines. It new, needs a shape given spline. So for example, we go with a circle and this circle defines um, the basic shape of the object we want to create. And I use a smaller radius on this circle right now. And now we want to to create a path at which um, this shape is projected um, along. So I go to the top view right now to, um, to create a, a path shape. And again, I just, start anywhere in the scene and I create just some random random form. Okay, I go back to the perspective view and then I just drop in those two <clears throat> two splines and if I zoom in a little bit you can see that we now get um, something like a cable. Um, and the good thing is now I can go back to my splines, of course, and adjust the parameters. So if I want it to be a little bit more thicker, I can do that by um, increasing the radius or I can go to my spline if I want to um, change the form. And here's a quick tip. If you want to deactivate the um, generator for a short moment, you just hit the Q key on your keyboard so then the this reap generator is now deactivated and you can see your spline a little bit better and I can move now the the point around or adjust the um, the tangent a little bit and if I hit Q again my um, sweep generator is um, enabled again. Again you can drop in whatever shape you like if you want to um, use for example the star shape again for it you can also drop that in. Now it's a little bit too too big in its size, so it um, decrease the radius a little bit. And now you see that we have something like this. Okay, last but not least, we have the loft generator. And the loft generator also uses um, multiple splines to, to create its form. And I just use the, the circle this time, or multiple circles to illustrate you how it works. So I start off with, um, with one circle and I copy and paste it and I just move it along the Z direction a little bit. And now I create another copy of it, move this to the middle in between, and I decrease the radius of that circle a little bit. And now if I put those three inside the loft nerb, you'll see what happens. Um, now there's one problem because the um, the hierarchy of those uh, elements is not correct. Um, I have to put the circle two in between the, the other twos and I see uh, I get the shape I wanted to create. So we have two big circles on the outside I just used the Q key again to um, deactivate the loft generator for a second. Um, so we have two big circles on the outside and the small one in the middle. And the loft NURB generator is basically just wrapping around the, the 3D shape um, around those um, circles. Um, so I can also copy and paste that again and move this a little bit to this side and you can see that we can create a shape by this pretty much. I can also go ahead and copy and paste this circle, uh, decrease the size a little bit, uh, move it a little bit to the inside and you get pretty much the idea of the the possibilities you you have with the the loft generator. So for example the, the wine class you could also as well use um, the loft generator to to create the wine class um, most of the times I find it quite difficult to, to get exactly the shape you want if you use the loft NURB, um, but sometimes it's also pretty, um, pretty handy and pretty fast 
uh, way to, to achieve your goal. Okay, so this was the overview of the, the different um, NURBS generators. So keep in mind, you just need uh, a spline or mul multiple splines inside of your um, generator to create the 3D shape out of your um, otherwise two-dimensional spline. Okay, here's a quick roundup of today's session. So um, splines are pretty much like the path, you know, from Photoshop or Illustrator, but of course, actually now in the 3D space. You can use the NURBS generators to create objects out of your splines. Uh, you don't have to necessarily know what, what NURBS stands for uh, when you're working with splines, um, but we'll, we'll cover the, the NURBS again in the, in the polygon. Uh, modeling sessions, so um, it's quite good if you have a basic understanding um, of it. Um, there are also the pre-built spline shapes, just like with the parametric objects. Um, you can use them to uh, to get started pretty pretty fast. And well, the splines and ribs, of course, used to create more complex, also non-uniform objects. And it's like one step um, further than with the parametric objects we covered roughly in the first session. And last but not least, least here's a, uh, like a quick tip. Um, you can think of the NURBS generated object as something like self-made parametric objects. Um, you still have um, not a polygon object where you can tweak and adjust every polygon by itself, but you have now considerably more parameters to work with as you, as you work with, um, with the splines and the different points and all the parameters which are given to you by the, um, by the generator itself. You have much more control now over the objects you create, um, but it's still pretty simple um, to work with it uh, as you most of the time also only work with the with different parameters um, of your generators. So you don't have to worry about polygons as of now. Okay, this is it for uh, the spline modeling session. Um, I would advise for you to um, to try to build some uh, some objects with the spline tools and try to find the, the corresponding or best fitting uh, NURBS generator. So for example, uh, try to create a bottle or a wine glass or a candle. Uh, yeah, well, just pick something um, from your from your home or from your office and um, try to try to build that using um, using the splines and uh, the spline generators or NURBS generators and um, don't focus too much uh, on the details uh, as of now. Um, just find your way around and uh, get used to using splines and also the the NURBS generators and also try to, to understand the differences between the different um, generators. Okay, see you.